In this video, we're going to learn how to use the fire control radar to give ranging guidance to our rockets and guns in the AH-64D Apache. All right, guys, welcome aboard the H-64D Apache, and today we're going to continue talking about the FCR and how we can use it with our gun and our rockets. I'm going to go ahead and select the FCRs. One thing I did not cover in the last video, and I should have, uh, but I was kind of distracted, uh, is target. So we'll do this out on the range, but essentially when we have a, uh, we've done a sweep and we've got an actual primary target, we can hit this button here on L4 and that will create a target point which we can then access later in our chord page. We pull up chords and we'll have targets and threats which is obviously nothing there now but that will populate and then we can have that information we can use that as an acquisition source things like that nature. So we'll talk a little bit about that here in a few minutes uh, but first let's head on out to the range and we'll get some uh, rockets and gun going. All right, so we'll arrival uh, to the range. We've got the target array out on the right side. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and arm the aircraft. And I'm going to activate the FCR. And like we talked about in the last video, we're going to change our acquisition source. We're going to change it to pilot helmet sight. So now the FCR is moving with my head. So I'm going to look out to the right there. I can see the targets visually. I'm going to go ahead and conduct a scan. We can see FCR transmit range 5.1. So we know that it's got some things here. So it is picking up. Uh, those four targets now we can visually see that there's more again you know radars aren't perfect uh, but it's done its scan and it's picked up some targets now as I said before uh, we've got this target button and we've got our primary target in that diamond and our next to shoot target in the uh, upside down triangle I'm gonna hit target and I'm gonna hit all and it's gonna populate all of those targets that we just saw as targets one through four all right, and we can see them populate on the TSD. If we go to the attack phase, let me zoom in just a little bit. I've only got two hands, so forgive me. All right, so we've zoomed in. Let me bring the scale down some, and we can pan it over. All right, make sure I don't crash. All right, so we can see that those targets have indeed populated targets one through four, with target one being the primary target. So now, uh, back at our TSD, uh, we can bring up the... Uh, board page we have all that data there available for us this is a good way to then orient the FCR orient uh, your TADS weapon systems things like that so we don't have the ability to link but what we can do is we know which primary target we're gonna shoot which is that uh, that tank or, or whatever that armored vehicle that is detected we know that that's target one on well, the front seater could pull that up and use the TADS to visually acquire it, make sure that it's not uh, a friendly vehicle, uh, make sure that it's the uh, primary target that we're trying to hit, you know, whatever the case may be. But this is a way that we can access that information uh, visually. All right, we're going to continue around though, and the intent here is to show that we can use our weapons, uh, other than the Hellfire, we can use our rockets and our gun with the FCR. And so we still have it on pilot helmet sight targets or back here I'm gonna go ahead and arm rockets and right now the aircraft still thinks that we want to engage that uh, tank or or BMP or whatever it is that I put out there again it's detecting that it's some sort of armored vehicle it's not it's not perfect it's not like a the old Jane's longbow where it told you t72 and you know Shulka um, it's trying to figure out what it thinks it is based on you know, parameters that are loaded into the aircraft all right, so we've got rockets selected. We've got a range. What I'll do, though, is I'm going to do one more scan as we come inbound. And we'll just do a running engagement. This is actually easier to shoot rockets, particularly with the Apache, when you do a running engagement because it's easier to control the yaw. All right, so let me... I've had... I know I said rockets. I had missiles up, but now we've got rockets up, and our target is off the nose. The pylon limit, that's because of the range right now, because I've got the nose so far down, uh, the pylons can't articulate high enough. But now they're, they're getting into the part where they can. 
Just bring the nose up just a little bit, get everything lined up. And I'm gonna shoot some rockets. So it's going off of uh, the ranging data given by the radar, which is just old information, right? It's not continuing to scan. And then I'm just getting everything lined up so that the rockets will go towards the target area. Again, rockets are an area effect weapon. I know you're, it's disappointing to not hit the target with rockets. Uh, it is very satisfying when you do. Those are good rockets. In real life, those are good rockets. All right, so we're getting closer and closer. And we could continue to do this all day, but I think you understand the point. Now what I'm going to do is get a little bit closer. We're at 2K. I'm going to go ahead and switch the gun. Once again, the gun is getting ranging data. And the site selected is the FCR. We can see all that in our HDU. So we'll fire. And we have rounds on target. I'm not having to do this crazy move my head around. I hate running engagements with the gun directly on. Shooting off the side, that's one thing. Head on shots, an absolute pain. Now notice that the aircraft has not transitioned to the next target. Okay, so it's not like the missiles where it's going to transition to the target. So if we want to transition, we can go to our next to shoot. Somewhere out here is it two and a half K. Can't see him with the FCR necessarily, but I can look at the TSD and I've got that target Q. I'm going to put it off the nose. Does it were 1.8? I don't even see him. I think I see him. I'm just going to go ahead and fire. We'll just see what happens. He's either that guy. Yeah, okay, he's that guy. I figure it was that guy or that guy. One of the two. All right. So once again, we can do another scan and we'll pick up various things. The aircraft doesn't know that that vehicle is no longer a valid target doesn't know that we've killed it. Okay, so just something to something to consider. All right, so if you go back to the targets and we want to save all, notice it says target 05. That's letting us know that the next target it queues in is going to be target 05 and it should have six targets. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, the next time if we do another scan, we're going to pick up target uh, starting from target 11. Now, what we may notice as well is it starts populating targets on top of other targets. Trying to find proof of that. There we go. Target 1, 7961. Target 5, 7961. See, so it doesn't know, it doesn't differentiate the fact that it's already put a target on one that we've already put a target on. Hopefully that makes sense. I think you guys understand what I'm getting at. So already we can see that having the radar on board can be very helpful, particularly when you're playing uh, as, a, as a single player, because you can get a lot done with the radar, particularly when it comes to rockets. Trying to shoot cooperative rockets with someone else is, is really the way forward with the Apache. That's the way it was sort of designed to, to operate, and it's much easier than trying to eyeball it and do that crazy HMD shot, which I just absolutely hate. Uh, but with the radar, you don't even need to use George. You could just use the radar. So let's do another scan. Go up to FCR again. Scan. See what it gives us. All right, so we've got a target right off the nose. 1.7K, so he's pretty close. Probably a little bit closer than I want to be. Now you notice I'm wobbling around. That's, that's natural. That's going to happen. But at a hover, it gets even worse. So what I recommend with shots uh, with the rocket is even if you're trying to hover, don't hover. All right, so just keep it going forward slowly, just a little bit slowly, and you're gonna have better control over the yaw. All right, this is the this is the the, the secret. I learned flying Kiowas and having to shoot MPSM shots at 6K from a hovering position. Just let it drift forward just a little bit, and you're gonna be able to control that yaw just a little bit better than you would at a straight hover allowed myself to get into a hover. There you go. Anyway, all right. I think we've covered enough. I think you understand the radar gives you range and you use that range to shoot targets. It's it's pretty self-explanatory. 
Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks so much for Patreon supporters, for channel members, and for you guys that just watch the videos and comment, leaving nice, kind comments. I appreciate that. We'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy.